mayors against illegal guns, um, but uh, and I don't think there'd be any question about that. But there is a statement of principles uh, which sort of goes beyond that. Because it not only talks about illegal guns, uh, it also talks about opposing federal efforts to restrict cities' rights to access, use, and share data. Yeah. Um, lethal military style weapons and high capacity ammunition magazines off our streets, which in some places are not necessarily illegal. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of principles here that they're asking us to sign on to, which are kind of beyond the illegal guns. And I guess the question is, the question I would ask my colleagues is, do we want to join this coalition or let it ride for the time being? I, I would join it myself. I would join it myself. I'd let it ride. We got two in favor of, Yeah. You might be the swing vote here. Yeah, it looks that way, yeah. Whoa. Mm. It seems okay to me. I mean, all these things are things that I think are problems, personally anyway, that need to be addressed in some way or another. So I would be okay with, you know, joining the movement, so to speak. Yeah, I think it's about time mm -hmm. you know, that, that leaders uh, stand up and do the right thing in regards to uh, proper uh, gun regulation. I, I, well, isn't it, isn't it already illegal to carry around a weapon on the street? I could ask the, the commander. I mean, some of the stuff I'm reading is like... <laughs> is, it, is it legal to have a... I mean, if I see somebody walking down with an AR-15 or something like that down the street, you know, I mean, I think it would be, you know, if they're not a uniformed officer or something like that, it, that is, like, severely well, out of place there. It, it is now, I should say, actually, because, uh, you know, you had the open carry uh, group uh, for quite a while. Uh, yes. Bringing a lot of attention to... Uh, gun rights or gun ownership, and, and it wasn't illegal to walk down the street going to Starbucks. with a gun or, or, or rifle, in fact, uh, but recently that loophole was uh, was sewn up, uh, and it, now they, you can't do that. So. Is that nationally or just in California? Now, you know, that California law, they, they California. tied it up. I can't speak for the other yeah. states, but right. they just recently yeah. tied that loophole up here in California. When you think about that situation, I remember that, uh, that, that boy in Florida. You know, uh, you know, you have people yeah, walking I mean, around who are neighborhood protectors, you know, and they have, you know, uh, authorization to use, you know, a deadly force if they see fit. You you're know, always going to have you know. yahoos, you know, I mean, it's, uh, to me, it's the illegal ones that uh, are yeah. the problem. It's not the uh, goofy, but, um, it's a few goofy people. One thing it says here, it says, keep lethal military style weapons and high capacity ammunition magazines off our streets doesn't necessarily say they're, you know, carrying them openly. It's just, it's just a, it, it really implies that this it's is a bad thing. It's gun sales and, for, I yeah. mean, it, I get the impression that Which is certainly possible. Gun sales and, and trafficking, and, and I think that's a good idea, I think. Right. This is to join mayors against illegal guns. Right. Illegal guns, yes. Yeah, if they're illegal, yeah. We should all be against illegal guns. Right. right. And everyone who should, who wants to own a gun should have a background check, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, they're supposed to, unless a, unless a, unless they steal a weapon or two parties agree upon a sale without going through the proper channels. And at gun shows and a lot of other places. Well, in proper channels, the gun shows are supposed to check people. They're supposed to run like a, what is it, a 21 day or 14 day uh, 15 check? 15 day, I believe. There, there's. It's been quite a while since I've been there, but they do have a table at the gun show at the Cow Palace where. You're, all the people that are there with guns are supposed to route all the deals through the table that, that goes through that uh, check process and the 15-day wait. So a lot of people go in there to buy a gun. They don't walk out with it. They have to go through the DOJ check. Right. Yeah, but that's here, and that's not everywhere. Yeah, and, and it used to be, um, from what I understood, uh, years ago you could go in and buy a shotgun and walk out with it or a rifle, uh, but not a handgun. Right. Is that still the law? 
You know, I can't tell you for sure. Uh, there's been uh, talk about uh, making that on all weapons, and I'm not sure if that's gone through yeah, or not. It should be on all weapons. It's okay, so I'm hearing um, uh, one with Mayor Bloomberg in this uh, in this effort. I would. Okay. All right, we've been successful on extending this one out past 10:30. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one more thing. Um, in terms of the communications, and that's pool the, fees. the pool fees, and, the, and there's the email from uh, Donna Salazar, and then there's the response that I gave, but that was just to her. But now it's public since it's a part of our communications, and I was going to ask if Stuart wanted, wanted to make any comment on it. No, I, I think your response is, is correct. The challenge that we have is um, in the mornings, we keep the pool open for about for three hours from 6.30 to 9.30. We need staff there prior to that to open the doors. We need staff there after that to close it. Um, we run about 10 to 15 people, I guess, on average a day during that three-hour period of time. The cost, you know, with, with, all, with most of our pool programs, the cost is higher than what it costs us to operate the pool during those hours. We get less money in during those hours than it costs us to operate. Um, a few years ago, we did a survey when we were having issues of bringing in lifeguards, and we actually had to have the fire department. If you remember this, we had to have the fire department come up to the pool in order to have to even be able to open it. Um, and at that point in time, we asked. Um, people who are using the pool in the, in the mornings, whether or not they would be willing to pay an extra dollar if the, if to keep the pool open in the morning, there was an overwhelming response that they would. And I think because at that time there was a concern that it would be closed. Since the recession, I don't think we've had quite the same problem getting lifeguards because we have a number of people who have their college degrees who can't find jobs and are being lifeguards in our, for our city, for San Francisco in any other place where they can get it. So I think it's been easier easier for us to keep it open, but no less expensive for us to keep it open. Um, I've had a number of conversations with people when I go swim there. And, you know, when I talk to them about what the overall cost of the pool is and what it costs us to um, run it and what we take in from people, they understand the rationale. Um, if you look at the cost as a $5 increase on our punch passes, or five dollars on a monthly um, punch passes. We have 15 uses for a punch pass. If you use it for the morning, it's about 30 cents extra per swim. And on the monthly pass, it's probably even less than that because monthly pass users are even more dedicated towards using them. So the overall increase isn't a lot. In fact, you know, based on this, looking at our budget. My my guess is we'll probably be looking at raising rates similar for all users because we are losing money whenever we open the pool, unfortunately. And this is, I think, just what we need to, you know, if we want to keep the pool open, we want to keep it at the quality that we have with the quality lifeguards that we have, we need to start looking at that. Yeah. And I would say the other cha the other area where we have challenges is during the winter months in the evening. Um, you know, we run for that two-hour period. We get about 10 to 12 people in the evenings. And one of the things that would save us more money is the longer we can keep the pool covers on. So if we're able to keep the pool covers on, you know, from 1:30 uh, in the afternoon until we open again at 6:30, that would be a savings in our gas and our utility bill. So that may be a rec, you know, I'll talk to the Parks and Recreation Commission about seeing if we, you know, what the desire is there. The challenge is, if, you know, we have a steady 10 or 15 people who use the pool. So it will, it will have an impact on some people if we actually close it for that period of time. So I, hopefully that answered mm -hmm. the question mm -hmm. about why we did the rate increase and right. the kinds of numbers that we were looking at. Right. Have we been approached by any companies to make any kind of deals, or have we? No, um, you know, we have. When we first opened the pool, our pool super, our person who is the pool supervisor, 
um, approached companies. Um, we let companies know that they are um, that their employees are get residential um, fees paid the same as residents. And I, you know, being a regular swimmer there, I know that there are a number of people from companies who use our pool because I know who a lot of the regular swimmers are. Um, but we haven't really ever approached companies for the purposes of donating money specifically for the pool. We ask companies to donate money for other things in the community, such as concerts from the park, such as the school, um, and for the spring fling and the and best PTO. Asking them to donate money for the pool, you know, maybe a challenge and maybe overreaching some of that. If we were to look at creating some kind of a membership in the city where you could be a member of of the Parks and Recreation Program, and it would apply to um, to citizens, residents, as well as companies, you know, that may be a, another way to go about it. Um, but especially now that we have um, less staff trying to go out to the reach out to the businesses becomes a a challenge for us. But it's something that we could you know we could talk could talk to Parks and Recreation Commission as part of their fun, um, their fundraising committee and see if that would be uh, something they would want to take on. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Okay. okay. Um, so, we got through all of our communications. And the uh, last item on the agenda is are all communications number two? Anyone would like to say anything? Not seeing any response to that. Uh, we move to adjournment. Adjournment. I make a motion to adjourn to our next uh, meeting. Which is April 15th, so second. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. We did. Thank very you very good. much. Very good. Very good. Okay.